Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. I want to spend the next seven days, including the day. So from the 13th of February until the 19th of February, I'm going to be talking about the purpose of dwelling in the promised land. And in order to understand that, you have to understand the history. Why was it necessary for them to be in the promised land? Why did God want them in the promised land? And we're going to go back and we're going to look at from from the book of Genesis to have us an understanding the promised land because you have a promised land you have a place that God has designed as your place of most effective ministry that's your promised land the promised land is not the end it is the beginning it was the place where God was going to put Israel to minister to the whole world it is their most effective place of ministry when we look at it, if they could not serve God in Egypt, they couldn't do it in the wilderness, but it was a place, and it wasn't just any place. It was a place that flowed with milk and honey. It was a place where God took care of some things to fix it where they would be most effective in ministry. If you don't know that, brothers and sisters, you're lost, because if you get to where God wants you to be, you'll mess it up. Because if you get there and you don't understand purpose, purpose, the promised land has purpose. And God is very precise and very clear of what his purpose was for Israel. And he said, it is, it is to confirm, exalt, fulfill his covenant that he made with Abraham. So I want you to stay tuned. That's February from the 13th through the 19th. We're going to spend those seven days talking about purpose. So if you miss a day, go back and get caught up. Because if you don't understand the purpose of where God is taking you, your promised land, it's no good to get there because you will end up cursed and in a worse place. God bless you. Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to your Acts Ministry podcast, and we're talking about the book of Joshua, talking about possessing what God has promised to us. And let me tell you, your promised land is different from my promised land, because the promised land that God has given you it is for you to perform the destiny that God has given you and your purpose on earth. When we talk about promised land, we're not talking about physical land necessarily. We're talking about arriving at that point in life where you're most effective doing ministry, most effective understanding the purpose that God has called you to uh, operate in. So we've talked a lot about the book of Joshua, when we talked about uh, going into the promised land, crossing the Jordan and so forth. But I want to back up for a minute and talk about and really focus on purpose. Because I really want you to understand purpose, purpose. Because if we don't get the purpose of the promised land, then it will mean nothing. It will mean absolutely nothing. So we have to understand what purpose is all about why did God want them in the promised land what was the purpose of that what were they supposed to do once they got to the promised land how were they supposed to operate in the land of purpose since God had promised it to Abraham hundreds of years before they actually reached the land of purpose let me take you and 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 jump start the conversation by going to the book of Deuteronomy and Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18 I want you to hear what God is saying to us and it says this Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 it gives us concisely what the purpose was for them to possess the promised land what did God have in his mind 
Now, it took centuries and hundreds of years to get to this point, the point of purpose. But in, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, it says this, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Now, what God is saying to them is that when you get into promised land, this is Deuteronomy chapter 8. We've studied a little bit of this. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, he's talking about once they made it to the promised land. And he did not want them to forget what God had done. So he says to them, the whole purpose is that God may establish his covenant. And he wanted them to understand that it was God that gave you your wealth. Now, if you back up a little further, you hear him talking about beware. He tells them to beware that once they get in the promised land, that they don't forget. They don't forget the purpose of being there. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. So many people have forgotten why God has blessed them, where God has brought them from. I witness this every day of my life. I see it close up. I see it afar off. Uh, that when God multiplies a person, when God increases things in a person's possession, they forget. This scripture is lived out day by day. In many of our lives, we, we see it. So God says, I want you to remember it is the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Axe Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. So God says, I want you to remember... It is the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Now, the reason why he said that is because what he said they was going to do when they got in verse 17. He says, then you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand hath gained me this wealth. Now, God says, now, I don't want you to get into your promised land and think it's all about you. You say, my power and the might of my hand have gained this wealth. That's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17. And when you read that, God gives a list of things that he did to position them in the promised land. And one thing he said to them, it was not because of who they were. It was not because they were more righteous than the nation that they were going to expel. God says clearly, it is not your righteousness, but it is about the promise. It is about purpose, purpose. So he's warning them not to get lifted up, not to say, I did it. But he says to them, when you get there, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. The covenant, the Abrahamic covenant, that God swore to Abraham hundreds of years before they got to the promised land, hundreds of years before they went in. God swore to Abraham that he was going to give him a land that flowed with milk and honey. But what happened, as you know from history, is that when they got in, they forgot. 
Now, he warned them way ahead of time like he does us. He doesn't let us get shocked and surprised. He sends a word through his prophets. He warned them to remember the Lord your God. Now, this is, this is, this is so important. I'm not trying to belabor the point, but if you don't get this, you, you, everything else goes out the window. When people get to a certain point, they don't recognize that God brought them there. And they think that their own might, their own power, has brought them to this place. One of the slogans we've been using the whole year, and I've been telling you about it, is found in Joshua chapter 1, verse 12 through verse 18. When you look at it and you read it, the two and a half tribes was saying to the other nine and a half tribes, once they got their possession, once the two and a half tribes got theirs, they said in essence with their actions and with their words, we're going to fight until you get yours. We're going to fight. And they were the first into battle. They armed themselves and they went into battle to fight until their brethren got theirs. Brothers and sisters, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to be here a long time. But if you've known people that God is blessed, once they get to that point, they forget about everything God has done. He says here in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he suffered them to hunger. He permitted them to hunger. He was trying to teach them that you do not live by bread alone. Purpose. This whole thing, everything that had happened to them in their lives was them getting in position to operate within the purpose that God had given them. Just think about that. That is so incredible. All the things that we think was a misfortune and we think this happened and that happened. And God is going to use everything in your past so you can fulfill your purpose. You can fulfill the destiny the call that is on your life, that is on my life. This is something that God wanted Israel to recognize that they did not recognize. They did not understand. And he told them years before it happened, decades before it happens, centuries before it happened, this is what I am going to do. He told Abraham, I'm going to do this with your descendants. Because he's trying to bring them to a point, a purpose. And I'm going to show you what that purpose is. And that purpose you can see as we go back to the book of Genesis, the book of beginning. In Genesis chapter 17, when God is having a conversation with Abraham, he says something to Abraham that we have to understand what got this ball rolling for hundreds of years, what God's original plan was. Let me tell you, you, you actually go back to the beginning and you go back to the book of Genesis and you see when Adam sinned completely out of the will of God. Now, the one thing you have to understand it's out of God's will, but because God is omniscient, he knew it was going to happen. It's not what he wanted. It was not his desire, but it happened. But it didn't take God by surprise. Because God had a plan, a plan, a plan of rescue. We see that in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. It is in the same chapter that Adam and Eve sinned that we see God telling them that the last Adam, Jesus Christ, was going to be born and he was going to bruise that same old serpent. He was going to bruise his head. He was going to win. He was going to bring us out. So when, when, you, when you see that, man is thrown into sin. He's thrown into sin because of the choices and decisions that are made. At that point, there is a plan of God that goes into action to redeem man, to bring him back. Now, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. When the angel sinned, there was no redemption plan. But when man sinned, God sent his only begotten son into the world to redeem man. Now, we weigh in the book of Genesis. We haven't gotten to the gospel where Jesus is crucified. If you look at biblical times, we're probably 4,000 years before that happened. 
But here's the plan that God has to bring man out. And this plan is being worked. Is being worked. Now let's let's look at what God says in, in the covenant to Abraham, who is the father of us all. In Genesis chapter 17, it says in verse 1, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between you and between me and you and will multiply your seed exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face. God talked with him and saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. Now, you got to understand, Sarah has no children. Her name now is Sarai. Abraham's name is Abram. He's not a father of many nations yet. So God is speaking to Abram and telling him what he's going to do. He's going to make a covenant with him. You're going to be the father of many nations, not just one nation, not just the Hebrew nation, but many nations, all the nations of the earth. He says, and your name, no longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. That's where he changes his name. He makes a covenant with him. And I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you and their generation for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I will give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger. All the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. So you see this promise that God made to Abraham, and he sealed it with circumcision. That was the sign of the promise that they was reminded of every day. The sign of the promise. Every day they was reminded of the circumcision. So God is, God is saying, to, saying to Abraham, I am going to make a covenant with you so every nation on the earth will be blessed. Are you seeing it? Now, this covenant cannot be fulfilled unless the nation of Israel get to the promised land. It can't happen. It's got to be in the promised land. Now, this is the reason why we have a promised land. You know, whenever you talk to somebody, and they say, I want this, I want that. They say, I want to be rich. I, I want to have uh, this type of family. I want to have uh, this much money. I want to have this much education. I want to get this. I want to be able to. When, when you boil all that down, you have to ask them why. Now, if the why is just to consume it upon their own lust, they have missed purpose. They have missed the purpose of God if it's just for them if it's just for them if it's just for them and their family they have a missed purpose because God blesses us in order for us to be a conduit and a blessing to others Abraham said bless me Lord and make me a blessing there are many people who want to be blessed but they don't want to be made a blessing because to be made a blessing then you become a conduit for God to pour through you and be a blessing to others so when Abraham when Abraham recognizing and understanding the purpose was to establish a covenant a covenant get us to the promised land remember Jesus Christ is coming through the lineage of Abraham he is going to be born in the promised land now so much that so much information I need to give you to understand because you have to understand the history without the history you're doomed to repeat the past we're doomed to live a life without purpose a life without understanding if we don't understand the past the history and many of us we don't like history because we don't understand how important it is we don't have a clue to how important history really is 
We don't have a clue until we go to the doctor. And then they want you to fill out all those papers before they even see you. Papers concerning your mother, your father, your grandparents. Many times people you've, you've not seen or known. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. The Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street. Morning Glory begins at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Sunday School begins at 8.30 a.m. And for a powerful word, join us at 9.30 a.m. for our morning worship service. Bible study is each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. At our Conway location, Morning Glory begins at 10 a.m. Sunday School begins at 10.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 11.30 a.m. On Thursday, our Bible class begins at 6.30 p.m. For more information, go to axeministriesonline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank Street.